Muss aber mal. Oh, you're here? Okay, I'll be right back. Oh. Like, put your clothes and stuff? Oh, we can move it to the front. And people are probably going to hate this, but I don't like landscape style books. I don't like holding a thing that's like landscape, like, like, this is sort of landscape, but like when it's like really bad, I'm just like, oh, I can't deal. So I like, I don't know, I just want to see photos vertically. People probably like think that's so dumb. But. <laughs> It's easier to find anything than it is to find something. You know what I mean? Like, it just kind of go. Uh, but, but LA's so vast and endless that, you know, I can just kind of go in a direction for hours. And it's really fun. There's no, I mean, there's nothing like really like special to me in particular. It's all special. I don't know, I'm really moody, so it just kind of depends on the mood. It's always about photos. It's, photos are like, cameras and photos, like that's why I, like it, it makes me get out and, you know, do stuff and try to and lurk around. This is my friend Will, and the year is probably 94. He, he just lived with his mom, and his mom was like a really, really cool, like, she was a librarian, she was kind of like, all she did was read and their house was just filled with like rugs and old books and it really kind of like influenced how like I wanted to live. The way I grew up was great, like my parents, they loved me and totally handled shit. But the way that Will grew up is, that's what I wanted. I wanted to, to be that. It sort of illustrates to me um, what it was like discovering skateboarding as a kid, you know, and like the, how it can guide you to where you want to get to, They're not really even though you don't know it. Well, but so that's kind of what this photo does. I made this at Hamburger Eyes, actually. This one was always a little crazy. <laughs> this photo is pretty psycho. <laughs> Like just started going to therapy and um, I was just going through a lot of weird stuff and she, to try to try and illustrate something to me, she, she showed me this <laughs> and I had my camera. I was like, oh, can you just hold that and let me shoot it? And I don't remember how she reacted. She was kind of like, what? But um, I really like this photo. It starts with guilt, it looks like, which leads to anxiety and more guilt, and then you have uh, old coping mechanisms that don't work, which lead to depression, and then frustration, and then unmet needs, and then more anger and frustration, and then it just kind of like goes in a circle. It's just really about the cycles of like guilt and anxiety and like how you don't, how you use coping mechanisms that don't work. You need to break the patterns that make your life difficult, I guess. That's what this is about. I also think it's kind of funny, you know, taking a, like bringing your camera into like the most sacred place you could possibly be and start shooting photos of, and just, and revealing that about yourself is kind of weird, but, um, but I feel like people can relate to this, this type of, um, these, these words. I mean, I can't really get into the exact headspace that I was in when I took this photo, but I mean, part of me might have been a little bit cynical about it. I don't know. I think that's kind of like, as if, I think that as a person who takes photos, sometimes you just, you don't know why, you know, like you don't know why you, you make a picture. You just know that it, it, it should be a picture. And maybe later you look at it and be like, like, this is nothing, it's, it's garbage. But, um, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just thinking that it was, 
I remember just being like, this is something intimate to me and I wanted, I wanted to make a photo of it. I'm Kunle Martins and um, I'm an artist born and raised in New York City. Lucky, lucky, grateful to be an artist, a living and working artist. Uh, okay, what am I gonna do today? So I just finished all my morning shit, did my bike ride, did my morning meetings. Do you want, do you want an espresso? Yeah. Okay, cool. Like pandemic weight is like a real thing. Like people's bodies have like changed forever. Yeah. They're gonna try to lose weight and go back to like what they were like in 2019 and that body is gone. You can be in something else, but you can't be what you were then. Like you're never gonna be that, just move forward. It's like my hair, my ball spot is never growing in. I don't want to take Rogaine. I don't want to like, you know, like if anything, I'm highlighting it with colored hair, like bald, like that's, that's what it is. And then as soon as everyone else gets used to it, then I don't have to be insecure about it because everyone's seen it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's not like a thing. If like, it's not a secret. Let me see it. It's pretty stark, though. <laughs> You're laughing. I know. It's hilarious. I'm laughing because I like the reveal. You like oh. turn around. And it's like, <laughs> ying. That's good. That's good. I just repotted these yesterday, so like, I put water in them. Um, some people were baking bread, and I was buying plants. Because I was like home all the time. And like, I've always had plants, but it was more of the like, murder homicide sort of relationship um but i liked them but i didn't know how to keep them alive and then like you know as i slowed down and um just in general like it's like you know had a different way of like looking at life and stuff it was like oh okay like let me see what this plant needs today maybe it doesn't need to be watered three times a day maybe let's see you know and then uh, like, oh, like someone was like, oh, the, if the top soil is dry, we should water it. But otherwise, you know, I was like, oh, that makes sense. It's like human beings. It's like, I used to be a dick all the time. And like, that was people's experience of me. And if I had died five years ago, most people would have been like, oh, Kule was kind of fun. He was, he was kind of like, he was interesting. He was like, you know, kind of a dick a little bit. But now I feel like people who have met me in the past three years, they don't even know that part of me. Right, so, which is great. And so like, I, I, I like the, um, when people have a good experience with me in real time because I could see the difference in like, the, you know, our time. Like it's like the light bouncing off of you. Like it's, it's less like nervous energy and like you just try not to say the wrong thing because you think I'm gonna get pissed. It's more just like, you're chill. Like, and that's what I want the plants. To, I don't want that one to be stressed out in the other room because that's what I want. I'm like, like, where are you happy? You're happy over here? Chill, like, do you? Like, we're good. And life is just a lot easier that way, in general. This one. This is what started off your departure from always doing graffiti tag, stuff. Tag related graffiti yeah. stuff. Yeah, when I allow myself to like, uh, be loved by it right and like love it back it's like that's all I need that's all I need like I don't even need to like go any deeper like let's just like focus on the people in my life that I love that are like you know obviously I haven't gotten around to everyone I want to try everybody but and it's like okay well I have my work cut out for me how lucky is that I don't know like I'm pretty cool with like people just like, um, you know, like the, this interview is a reflection of like what you like, you know, wanted to know and stuff. That's fine. I mean, I think, you know, I like talking about myself and like my art and stuff. That's I like how I and how like my life is different now. So that's good. Um, uh, I feel like I can like that's another thing. Service like helping people because a lot of people like walk around like how I used to walk around in a funk, hating on everyone, criticizing everything. Like, why the fuck not, you know, life sucks. Um, but uh, my life isn't like that anymore, and you can too, kinda is my thing. All right, we are currently going to Goat Mountain, which is kinda like the central figure of Landers that everyone is somehow situated around. 
You can see there's like a little grove of trees. That's my neighbor who has the plane. And you can't really see my house, but I'm next to him. You know, I'm like interested in the ecology here, which it's kind of like ancient volcano and like just sand area. Like my house is sitting on just like straight sand. Um, and it's basically like a creosote forest or like creosote and Joshua tree. It's high desert. So it's like a little bit different from like the Palm Springs geography and ecology, but it's all changing. This is like drawing tattoos, kind of like clean media. And so far over there is like sculpture. So there's like the sewing machines, all my tools and yeah, just kind of like object based stuff. This was the show I was going to have this year. It's now been delayed. So I just put everything away. So I'm just hiding these things until next year. But these are all a set. And basically like, I don't know, came out of last summer, which was like this idea of the red sun because of the smoke and the heat and just like the illusion that happened in the sky of basically the sun just being this like foggy or like, you know, looking out in the sky is like orange and brown and the sun is this like haloed red light and how miserable that was. <laughs> but also beautiful because it was like, I don't know, I, the first summer being here and actually like getting to see the seasons change, it's, you know, it's like really, it's a very scary part of living here, but it's also like now that I like I like actually live here. It's like something I'm just gonna have to deal with year to year. And it's part of like committing to this place is like understanding that pattern. But I feel like I have a lot of half finished drawings cause I like get this far and I'm like, wait, what is it? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Cause I don't sketch anything beforehand or just kind of like have an idea. And then it's like, sometimes it's like one wrong move and I don't like it anymore. But when it feels successful or interesting and I can like build out from that moment, that is, it's like so much fun and very, very satisfying. When I look back through my work, I see all these themes that come up over and over. There is definitely this ecologic or environmental sensitivity and consciousness which is like always trying to like place people or characters or like myself within this kind of like greater realm. And not just through like the physicality, but through like the emotional experience. That is always like this, this goal with it or like, yeah, trying to create this tension that is like oh, yeah. a embodied reality that isn't just like a objective view of something, but it's also like the experience of something. Very nice. And what about on the net? Only God can judge me. I'm sorry, you must get bothered all day, but it's very striking. Can I take a picture? Thank you so much. What's your name? My name is Daniel. around in circles all day in the city and uh, kind of keeps track of whatever 
catches my eye or gives me a feeling, you know, just making myself a little emotional diary, uh, forcing myself to pay attention to my life racing by. And I have been in the city for 18 years. Moments where things line up in such a way that it seems in the context of the whole world, too good to be true, but isolated from the world, as like if I were the only storyteller that got to say what happened on Earth, uh, you know, it adds up to something better than what was really there because the parts just happen to align in such a way that is true but also completely misleading. Um, but that's very hard to get. Those are few and far between and very exciting. <laughs> Even while we're sitting here, there are these, there's two, two of one girl over there. There's these twins who are doing the exact same thing. Uh, and although I don't feel any compulsion to run over there and get proof of it, uh, it is an instance of this phenomenon where if you make the space in your life and in your mind to receive that kind of thing, and set out loosely to look for it every day, the world is just like, especially this city, is just overflowing with it. I mean, it just happened to us over there. You're talking about face tattoos. Two seconds later, we meet somebody with very interesting face tattoos. It's just a city that constantly rewards uh, a wandering mind. But also, I've been so amazed by what opening myself up to that has done to my mind and to my experience of the world and to my perception of my own existence. It's gonna be a great movie director. You're a great movie director. And he's the star. He's the star. <laughs> It's probably not something that we'll ever see the light of day. Um, Cause I don't know, it's not much of a photo, but I got her real sharp. The color is nice. The light's real good. I'm happy with it. It's just like, I don't know how many of these kind of drive by photos does a person need? I keep taking them because I don't know, if I don't, then when something really worth it happens, I'm not like fluid and in that zone. Um, <clears throat> so who knows? There's just gonna be some secret mountain of these <laughs> that you'll have to bury me with. Um, but I do like it. She's got such a cool face. I feel like I've always looked like a 45 year old since I was like 15. And so I've never been flashy, fashion has always looked stupid on me. I can't even wear sneakers. I feel like they look like birthday cakes on my feet. Uh, and so I've, all, I've always just been in a, uh, some stage of drifting into this natural, invisible old guy thing. Just bothering to look at everybody on the street every day, you start to have a different experience of being a person because you see everybody else doing it, and uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It's a it's a rambling thought, and it's hard to get to uh, any concrete end. But it kind of matches the experience of the thing. It just never ends. In a way that's maybe sounds like bullshitty and you know like phony zen. The real truth is, I don't care that much about the pictures anymore. Like I want them to be good. I still want to get a standalone banger. I still want, you know, the perfect alignment of the world that only I saw. Uh, but I'm so invested in the process and I'm so, my, my life has become so defined by the process that, I don't know, I care much more about the next day's work than I do about, you know, whatever, work I made the previous two weeks. 
So you're like a big picture guy. I guess so, which is weird. I like did not start out this way. This is definitely deterioration from the from the work. The, like I I have little by little lost interest in the the product and I'm just like deeply lost in the process. <laughs> 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 I I recycle like the theme of Paris, Texas a lot. The book in the movie directed by Vim Vendors. During that time, all those movies, they are like Americana, like a love letter to Americana. But I feel like he kind of captured it the best. Uh, his love letter was the best because Paris, Texas, even though it's like a real place, I think it was like an interview he did somewhere I read on some blog where it's a place that doesn't really exist. <laughs> uh, and that's like, that's like the pain where everybody's trying to get to a place that doesn't exist. And those are all the characters in the movie. And I feel like that's what I'm trying to get to with my work. So in a sense, like, it's like never ending. The main themes of my work are, is just like searching searching why do you think that is uh because i'm restless uh, i don't like earlier i said i don't really feel like i grew up fitting in anywhere or belonging i literally i feel like an alien like i have my own clock and my own vibes and my own setting and so i'm just like always like restless and <laughs> trying to find a home that doesn't exist. <laughs> if my work's confusing, then that's great. I want to confuse people as much as like, I'm just confused myself. So then we're like the same level when I'm making work. I feel like, uh, I feel eternal. Like, not, I think immortal and eternal are different. Eternal is just like, time doesn't exist. It's just kind of still. And um, like, anything's possible and it's like endless. I just like came up with this idea to paint the TV red. Um, kind of wanted to give it like a sinister feeling. Another theme in the work was just different mediums bootlegging each other, you know? I like just layering stuff like I'm listening to music, I have a movie on, um, so that I'm just like distracted enough to not be like, this is stupid, you know, and just like quit the work, I'll just keep going. <laughs> Each thing could exist without the other and just like alone, and then at the same time it could exist all together. This piece is just for this filming. I only really share stuff if someone that I like asked me. <laughs> Uh, and it's fun for me because I just like you being in my space and like I like the process and it's it's like a, an opportunity for me to like make the stuff that I like making. Art doesn't have to be like you, you like painted something. Uh, it's just like who you are, what you like take in and what you produce like out of that intentionally or unintentionally. Hi, my name's Yelma Ruth Smith, and I'm an eight, artist. Eight. <laughs> you got the artist part, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, eight. People like having me around, you know? What can I say? <laughs> I'm good times. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm an artist. <laughs> Yeah.
I think moving around in LA is easy, but I don't move around it. Um, I don't move around in a car at rush hour. It's one of my rules. People do it all day, every day, but I'm lucky because I don't. So moving around is easy and I love it here. So I have that weird feeling, I guess, of having lived here essentially for 40 years. And so every neighborhood holds like a big sort of moment for me of some kind whether it's simply like I slept in that building I did this for the first time there I met so-and-so there um, so it's like a really alive a lot living city to me I think I told you the other day but that hotel right there is where the Faye Dunaway character in Barfly, like the real person, that's where she died. And she hemorrhaged to death from alcoholism. Which is, it's a bad, bad way to go. Um, do you know a lot of kind of like LA history like that around? Yeah. I think it's good to know that if you love some place, it's good to know what happened here. Dude, he's always charging his battery. His car battery or his motorcycle battery, like always. Where are you? Listen. It's me and Peter. He's here to film you, but I haven't done my hair. Nor have I washed my huevos. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me one story about about Mike. Yeah. Okay, here's a good story about Mike. <clears throat> he was just complaining about his taxes, and then when I came home yesterday, here's this fucking thing from DWP that says. They're going to cut the power off tomorrow unless somebody pays 754 fucking dollars. I paid it. You paid it? Yeah. Cool. That's the Daily Mike. I came by and looked at all the mail and saw that and it was like yesterday or something. Okay, well, we'll give you, I'll get you, we'll get you some money for that. We're at my house, which is Vic's house. Uh, this is your house, here, bro. Moved here in 2008. I'm the caretaker. <laughs> Vic's the caretaker. I don't sleep here anymore. And what's, what's special about this house, or what is it? Oh, gosh, so much stuff has happened here. So much marriage and divorce and dogs and dogs dying and just a lot of life here. You can feel it. All right, we'll see you in a little while. Life. Okay. So when do you think the... Uh... Look at that guy. He's on the phone. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, the I think my best memories are always kind of end of summer when you're roasted because you go to the beach all the time and you're just in the zone. You're in the beach roast zone. And uh, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's when life's like most simple. Like all you have to do is wake up early and go to the beach and go in the water. And then, um, and you're like sickeningly tan. <laughs> but you're doing all this physical shit all day in the water. So you feel good all the time. You feel tired all the time in like a body exhausted kind of way that's good. I feel like I could become a semi-homeless beach person and be really happy, but I don't know if the people in my life would be happy with that. So I tried not to completely give in to that, but that's kind of where I'm happiest. I, you know what I've been thinking lately? So I'll be 47 in a couple months. I don't feel like I'm going to be 47, whatever that means. Um, time is interesting because it goes by really fast. Um, 
1996 doesn't seem that long ago to me. Um, but one thing that I find to be true is that life is crazy and you can't really predict what's going to happen next. And I'm consistently surprised by different things that come up. I guess some people get to a point where they're chill and they have their lives and they kind of like sidestep all the other stuff. I don't know, but I'm too interested to see what happens next. Um, I, I find it all to be very exciting. Just being alive is very exciting. I feel that. AC up a little? Yeah, we can do AC. There's this weird kind of constancy with things, you, things and energies you're drawn into and thus create. I had been drawing this image that was like this animal crossing little angel figure with wings and like pointy ears and it had a white chest. And none of that occurred to me until after I got Pando, but I was like, oh wow, he, he's got a little like mystical energy and that's something I'm always interested in like with my art. Pando, come here. Expressing yourself contains a lot of different things. Part of it that's communal, it's like some dog whistle thing for people who like feel the things you feel. But then there's another thing of wanting to truly like explore your own vibration. The questions you're asking me, wanting to ask those questions to myself and see more of that. Like, what, what is this about? And like, how does it look? And how does it expand on itself? Ultimately, there's a big part of it that is just personally experiencing. What, what mug is this? It's from the grocery store that I worked at in high school. What's it called? Shopper's Corner, since 1939. One of the questions is just like, is art important? Is it part of our existence? I mean, on one hand, I think the material world is totally an illusion and it's a tragedy if you're that caught up in it. On the other hand, we're here and it's really cool to communicate and explore your consciousness, develop your consciousness. There's so many different ways to be an artist and it's like, what's your orientation in it? Like, what's your motivation? There's this really great Lana Del Rey line. The darkness, the deepness, all the things that make me who I am. There's a certain kind of depth, depth of like feeling, like really like, that's my territory. I have, I have like service work that prior to the pandemic I did that was, it wasn't totally separate, but it was not fundamental to my practice in the studio. And I like believe in that kind of thing, but I think being an artist and, and being in your mode of creation is like a very high vibrational thing to, do, to be on the earth. At some point you have to make a decision or like say the right thing. That sense is still being developed in me. That sense is like actually kind of young in me. text me like once. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, dude, I'm not going to trip you out and sound like some weird like dude by saying this, but that's happened to that's maybe everybody has those kind of people in their life or like that happens like to everyone like like just as commonly as you, but with other people. But strangely enough, that's happened a lot with me. I don't know why. Like every time I for sure text like my partner, she's always like, dude, I was just like about to text you. 
But aside from that, I've had like several like just homies tell me like about me entering their dreams, which is funny because I don't actually really remember my dreams ever. So I'm always kind of like, oh, it's because I was in, yeah, I was like, yeah, that's where I was last night. I was in your dream, you know? But um, yeah, strange that's happened a lot in my life. I don't know why. Typically me waking up really early in the morning and having like a quick panic attack, like, ah, gotta like get out of here and then coming to the studio and kind of pulling like 10 hours or even more. Yeah, I mean, I guess before I come here, I go get a coffee, something like really strong. <laughs> and then uh, uh, the next time I'll probably leave is to go get another coffee and some food and then uh, when I go home, I'll just like watch something with a lady and just go to sleep. But, you know, obviously like, um, that's just because lately I've been kind of on a sick one, just trying to finish, finish shit up. <laughs> trying to look at some older, a look at the paintings. This is the last photo I took on the freeway. painting so we know that's going in somewhere well it's funny because I like I'm always driving so I always I mean obviously living here so I take like pics of just like cool decals on trucks and that's kind of how like the tailgates came about you know like those two truck paintings I made um, anyways I'll um I'll look I'll look at some paintings and just like list some shit exhaust Exhausted, exhaust, mental health, me metal health, headers, headaches, snake, snake exhaust. <laughs> it's actually kind of like a poem. Huh? These are actually, I feel like, still paintings, like, and like, I'm gonna make these. But it's one of those things where it's like, it might not even become a painting. Like, they might just stay in here or something. Or come back, like, way, way, like, later. Um, Airbrushing might be one of the most annoying things ever. It must be kind of like some kind of like masochist or something. Like I was even, I got tattooed in SF and this dude was like tattooing my ribs for like six hours. And he was like, dude, you okay? Do you want some like cream to numb it? I was like, nah, we're good. And he was like tripped out. He was like this like hardcore, like shaved head, just like all like tatted up dude, you know? And I'm just like the scrawny ass like skinny kid, just like, you know, a fan of his work. And then it's just like, he was like, man, respect. <laughs> Is it banded? Yeah, it's like, uh, they got like, um, it's like wrapped up like right here. This dude like named Matt Pardo, do you know him? No. He's sick, he tattoos up in, in SF now. They're like Blackheart. Um, but yeah, we, we didn't even get to finish because I had to go to dinner. But I was just like, dude, next time. I was like, I want him to like hit me again, you know? See, I was like, afterwards I was still like, I want more, you know? And I feel like that's kind of like airbrushing because it's like you're constantly taking that like apart or something. Well, I mean, it's not identical, obviously, but it's just like the, you have to spend so much time just like manically like trying to like fix something or problem solve. And it's like. Tell me the timeline, like what do you have to do to make a painting? Fuck, dude, like kind of torture myself, I guess. I'm gonna sit down right here. Uh, kind of torture myself, I guess, with like, um, just like, uh, like making a bunch of just like bullshit or something, like making. No, 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 I'm, I'm talking like technically. Yeah, no, for sure. Technically, I feel like <laughs> seriously. Technically, I feel like I have to make like a bunch of like, uh, just like weird or not weird, but just like decisions and like, um, in terms of like what I want to paint, and then like, that ends up like, meaning that I spend a lot of time just like sorting through like ephemera or like images, photos I've taken. Google searches, like all of it, you know what I mean? And then like start kind of collaging like a painting or, or like something on Photoshop or Illustrator. But, but it's kind of like a, you know, a process I feel like is kind of torturous or something, you know? Cause I'm just like making stuff that I'm so like insecure about or like kind of like, damn, this is like, this is just like trash, you know? And I end up like just changing my mind all the time. So, 
knowing that's gonna take me a long time to just like make one painting, like I'm just like like really hard on myself and making sure that like, okay, is this like I'm sure I'm gonna make this? Like is this what I'm trying to make? And then even then, you know, like when I start the actual painting, it's a whole other like type of decision making too, you know. <laughs> True, you trying to jump in on this or what? Just to look with like you know, bare canvas edges and shit, because all of that really is what created this sort of like weird uh, kind of embossed square around the edge. You can kind of see it depending on the light. So these are kind of almost done, maybe like, maybe like 50%, dude, you know what I mean? Like 50% there, you know what I mean? Um, but now they're gonna go back and they're gonna like sand this whole background off and like fill in this like crack around the whole edge and then finesse and sand that until it's back to a super smooth background and I'm gonna repaint the backgrounds. So I'm actually kind of going back a bit. So in reality, they're probably like back to like 25 or something. <laughs> so how long does one big painting like that take? Mm, it depends, dude. It really depends. Like, it can be, I've worked on like a painting for five months, like one of those truck paintings that's at, like, that was at the, the Deitch Group show. That was like five months. And then I've made a painting that size that took me one day. So it's like really depending on what it is. Just kind of wait for something to like come out of my head and I don't really know what it, what it like. It's just like, I don't know. I would just wait for like something. Probably like start doodling and like drawing stuff. I kind of am too fat, but Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That's probably about, oops, like, like, that's kind of what, what it is. And then, I don't know, I just sort of like, I just like chuck it away for a little while because it's not really, I mean, it's just like a drawing of Kevin in a maze or something. And then, when I'm really sick of looking at a stack of this shit, I just start cutting it up and gluing it to stuff like that eventually, and making those. So. You know, it's mostly like other people telling me that they saw what I was doing and they made them go draw and stuff or paint. You know, that's always like, I'm like, that's so sick. Cause like, I'm not, this is so easy that it's like ridiculous, you know? Like, and more people could do it and then they, they do it and they're like, it's so fun. I'm like, exactly, it's pretty fun when it's like, not work. <laughs> so that's like, well, like when it goes back to that is when it's fun and then that's when it happens. So like, that's cool. Like, I like that. That's like one of the best things that's happened. It's like other people tell me that they saw what I was doing and it made them go do shit. And I'm like, that's what's up. I love it. Paperboy, Christmas tree lot, uh, dishwasher, dishwasher, prep cook, uh, smoothie place. Oh, dude, before Smoothie Place, there was the bagel shop for a day, and I got, like, fired immediately. <laughs> um, uh, Amoeba. Uh, oh, when I got paid to put patchouli in, like, incense by the, like, package. I think that's it. And then the weed trimming. Oh, and the coffee shop. That was hard. That was the hardest one. More of a story, I guess. Definitely not... I mean, some of it's more of like just trying to describe. Uh, I'm trying to make what I see when I'm tripping. That's like really where it's at. Like it's that simple. It's like that's what most of this shit is. It's like I'm like, oh, just trying to describe like these very strange experiences that I have, and like maybe it's it's like I actually don't even know if it's gonna make sense because at this point it's like. I'm just trying to like 
digest them. Like, I'm like, that's part of my process, I guess. So I was just like, I don't know, you just eat like a certain amount of this or that. And you just like hang out in a safe place and like, and then I come back here and like over like time, I like start making stuff and I'm like, oh yeah, that was like how I remember this. Or I look at like little notes that I took while I was sitting there and they're like, oh yeah, that was like what was going on. Acting bad, doing bad stuff, <laughs> being a bad character, like Quasimodo says, right? Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. Just like out there exploring, seeing things different, um, uh, having fun, like being peaceful, like living, dying, trying to figure out what's what that is. I guess in a way. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess, the ebb and flow of reality, waking, sleeping, dreaming, hanging out with COVID, waiting for my kid to get born. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. Infinity, comic books, dead people. Yeah, the city, I guess, sometimes. <clears throat> Observing, I don't know. Textures lately, I've been into textures. The Nazca lines in Peru, I wanna go there. Have you seen those? Uh, I mean, it's sort of like a diary, and I'm just like slicing off chunks, <laughs> like wishing it together later. And then it's like something else. That's it. That's like how I think it works. So I'm not sure what the psychedelics are part of it. I'm not sure like how much of an important part of it they actually are. I don't know. Our cameras are a little weird because uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not really used to being in front of them. Like someone was talking about how they're like black holes or something, where like uh, they capture everything or like parts of everything at once and like change it into like a two-dimensional or I guess like digital is some I don't know ones and zeros or something but like a black hole captures like everything and like no one really knows what goes on inside of them you know they're just like maybe we, like we're inside a black hole <laughs> I don't know but like, that's what I think, like when I look at a camera, I'm like, what's going on, like looking at it.